Welcome back everybody. Today we're going over these things that you see in my hand and that you probably saw on my head during the intro. These are the Walkers XL uh, with Bluetooth electronic hearing protection. So there's kind of a lot going on, but it should be a relatively simple video. Um, I've had these in since they came out. I think that was like January of 2018. Uh, these have literally been on my head for hundreds of hours of shooting in lots of different conditions, indoors, outdoors, uh, all different types of guns, rifles, shotguns, pistols. Uh, I think a, belt, a couple belt feds, 240s for sure. So yeah, I've, I've had them in a few different uh, places and a few different types of guns. So I think I have a pretty good handle on what they do and don't do. So first off, the thing people always wanna know about is the NRR or noise reduction rating. And for muffs of this size and this weight, uh, these are very good. This is 26. And a lot of times when you see ones that are this thin on each side, these are probably, I would say, inch and a half-ish wide. Uh, when you see ones that are these thin, they tend to be 22 to 24. Um, but the reason they were able to get that NRR up so high is because they changed uh, where the electronics are. So uh, the electronics are actually up here on the headband. So we have uh, quad muffs or quad microphones, excuse me. So front rear for the right and front and rear for the left on both sides. So they do come through in a stereo configuration. So you can tell if stuff is in front of you, behind you, on the side. Not as good as you could with natural hearing, but you do know uh, directional differences when sound comes in. So that's good. A lot of um, electronic hearing protection doesn't give you that, although it's changing. More and more are doing that, but this one does give you that feature. Um, on these, this side here, which I believe is the right side as they're intended to be worn, you can see that is our battery compartment. It takes two AAA batteries. I should note it has an auto off feature, which is nice. You can actually program it off if you want to, um, but I don't really know anybody that would want to. Uh, mine are programmed for four hours, so uh, they do shut off because I've been on the range many times for longer than four hours, and they do shut off uh, as designed, so that's good. Um, and then over here on our left side, as they're intended to be worn, we have a lot going on. So let's zoom in a little bit and check that out. There are two completely different sets of controls on the electronic hearing protection if you have the Bluetooth model. If you don't, then there'll just be one. So what we have here on this side that you guys can see facing you, we have our power button, then our up and down button. And what that's gonna do is increase or decrease the amount of sound coming in from around you. So your situational awareness type of sound, your NRR is still gonna stay the same. That's a question people always ask me whenever I review electronic hearing protection. So that 26 NRR doesn't go away uh, with the volume changes. That's just the input of the sound around you. Um, and then we have this little button here, which is a mode setting. Uh, what's nice about these is everything you do on here is uh, voice prompted, I guess you could say. So as soon as you change a mode or you Put your volume up or, or go into bluetooth a like british sounding female comes on and says you know bluetooth on bluetooth connected and then with this it'll say like voice mode or boost mode or whatever it is there's four different modes one of them i think is a high frequency mode is what they call it but essentially what that's for and it's actually the one i use the most is for high pitch sounds so it amplifies high pitch sounds and why i use it a lot is because when i'm shooting out beyond like four or five hundred six hundred yards um, i can't always hear the steel ringing especially if i'm shooting like five five six and it really doesn't hit it that hard um, and it amplifies the sound of steel so that's good bullets hitting steel um, so that's one they have a voice one as well so if you're in like a crowded area or an indoor shooting uh, range it will allow voices to come through and be amplified up over other frequencies uh, that are coming in. And then it has a boost mode, which basically just makes everything louder. Um, I don't really know why you'd use boost mode, but it's there. Um, and then of course the standard that it will come with, if you don't mess with it at all, it's just universal, which is giving you equal amounts of all sound frequencies that are coming through. Uh, so those are the modes there and that's how you work through it. And then over here on the Bluetooth model, the center button is the power button and it will prompt you uh, when it comes on, you'll hear like a little noise, an electronic noise. And then as soon as it connects, like I said, it'll say Bluetooth connected. Um, and then down here is our up and down button. Now these are for up and down for the sound coming from your Bluetooth. It's separate from the sound here. So uh, I find me personally, it's easier to control your volume coming in uh, through whatever device you're using, whether it's like an iPhone, a phone, um, a uh, iPad, whatever, whatever you're using. Uh, I think it's easier to control the sound on that than it is to work through these, um, simply because for me, when I'm using them, 
and it may just be that I'm not the brightest guy in the world. Um, it seems like if I try to do it on here, I forget to adjust it here because obviously you want all the sound coming in to be equal, at least I do, and to kind of go back and forth on both is kind of annoying, so I just do that through the device, but it does give you the option to do it either way depending on what you prefer. In terms of the construction on these, they do have a nice padded headband, which is nice for folks who don't have hair like myself. Um, it doesn't dig into you, anything like that. Super comfortable long term. It's held up really well. It appears to have a neoprene material on there. Can't say whether or not it is neoprene. I do not know that, uh, but it definitely looks like it. I would, I would wager to bet a lot of money that it is. Uh, the polymers have held up well. We have some scuffing all the way around, but like I said, I've used these for literally hundreds of hours of shooting. Uh, on the right side, we do have some marks there where we've actually had cement casings hit it and it just nicks it up a little bit and keeps on going. So you can't complain about that. The actual muffs themselves, the pads are not gel pads. I do not know if there are aftermarket ones available. I would imagine there probably are, however, don't quote me on that, but they're not uncomfortable in any way. Like I said, I've worn these for long stretches of time. It's not a big deal. Would gel be more comfortable? Yep. Um, but they give you a good seal uh, with iPro stuff like that. They're relatively thick for pads, so uh, different types of iPro. Uh, it'll work right around them and still give you a good seal there. The one downside I have on these, really overall actually, is just gonna be the way they fit. So I have a seven and a half inch head in terms of like hat size, just to give you guys some perspective. So if you have a bigger head than me, I don't think this will be an issue at all. But if you have a smaller head than me, uh, it might be. So essentially my sort of complaint, if you will, is that when they're on, I feel like there's too much room. So this is all the way cinched up and it's just barely like the tops are at the top of my ear. So I think if my head was smaller, I might have a hard time getting a seal. If my head was larger, obviously you have plenty of room because they have a lot of adjustability built into them just something to be aware of. One thing that's nice too is that when they're all the way down, it has this little piece cut out there and it actually interfaces in there. So that does minimize the issue I was just talking about a little bit. So it's not pushing the cups out on the top, but um, maybe a little bit more adjustability would be a pro there. Uh, what differentiates these from these that I've reviewed in the past before positively, and I still wear these from time to time as well. These are the Walker's uh, razors with Bluetooth. Um, the big difference, the huge difference, like the fundamental leap of the two, in my opinion, is that these have digital uh, sound and these have analog sound. So um, the sound clarity, the sound reproduction, especially uh, when you're listening to music, if that's the case, is a huge difference here. It's also a big difference, of course, if you're, uh, you know, listening to ambient sounds, particularly indoors. So that reverberation that you get when you're shooting indoors, that's gonna happen no matter what. However, um, the, the, the way that electronics in this digitally process it versus the analog ones is way better. It just is, it's simply much clearer, much less annoying and basically less noise pollution coming into your ears. So that's the big difference of the two. These actually have less NRR as well, um, but that's definitely the biggest difference that I noticed. And uh, last thing, I guess we'll talk about price. Price-wise, uh, these MSRP at like $149, $149. And any of the non-Bluetooth versions, I think you drop like 30 bucks off of that. However, street price, I just looked around online today and saw these in the 90s, $90 range. Um, so again, minus 20 to 30 if you don't want the Bluetooth version of them. But all in all, they've held up really well. Uh, been out in rain, all of that stuff, no issues with the electronics. So I cannot complain at all. Uh, this probably won't be my longest video, but if I wanted to roll all the shooting footage in of these, it would be literally hundreds of hours long. So they're good to go, time tested in my experience, and I have no issues with them. Recommend them for sure in this price range. As you can see, they also fold up for convenient storage. If you guys have any questions about these, anything I didn't cover, you can always post those down below in the comment section. However, if you actually need an answer to your question, the best place to reach me is over at my Facebook page. That's where I get to everybody who sends me a message because I actually see them all versus YouTube, Instagram TV, wherever else I post. I don't always see them because of the way they're displayed. So that's it, guys. If you are subscribed to the channel, thank you very much. I appreciate it. If you're subscribed and you're not seeing two or three videos a week, I recommend you hit the notification bell if you're if you've done that and you're still not seeing it, I recommend you sign up for my email list. You can do so over at the sign up tab on my Facebook page or at the sign up tab on my website, mrguzzygear.com. I send out one email a week. It's not super spammy, but I send out all the videos that I post that week. So that way there's not a gigantic social media company in between you and me and you actually get the content that I put out. So that's it guys. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Look forward to seeing all of you in the next video.